Welcome to the Greg Bennett Show presented by Any Question. I'm your host, Greg Bennett. And today I got to have the opportunity to have a wonderful conversation with Lucy and Reese Charles Barclay. Uh, we discuss uh, the recent injury that uh, Lucy's been dealing with and how she's managing that and what the forecast is looking like for her to come back racing. Uh, we discuss a little bit about the St. George Ironman and what we enjoyed about that race. And then we also finish off just really looking at their relationship, how they met, who made the first move, and we just have a bit of fun. So the second half of the show is, is really fun. You'll enjoy Lucy's answer to what is her most used app on her phone. It's actually quite hilarious. So I hope you enjoy this one as much as I did. And you can also find both Lucy and Reese on any question because I know I can't ask every question to these guys. So if you go over to any question, um, download it, one word, any question on both iOS and Android. It's free for the first hour. And actually there is a promo going on for triathletes. If you type in uh, try twenty. 22 and it'll be free until october 26 the whole platform and on there you can ask questions and listen to answers to all the world's greatest swimmers and swim coaches and cyclists and runners and strength trainers and a whole bunch of other channels there so there's a lot of great content but both loose and reese reese are also on there and they've already answered a plethora of questions so there's a great amount of content from both of them there but please go check that out but I hope you enjoyed this one as much as I did. I, I just thoroughly appreciate these two. I know it's not the easiest of time for them, but, um, you know, coming out of injuries, they still took the time to sit down and have a chat with me, you know, and discuss everything that's going on in their lives. And just a, a, a really great conversation with two remarkable people. Remember, success comes to those who endure just one moment longer. All right. Today I am joined by one of my favorite couples in the world of triathlon. It's been an absolute pleasure to watch them just build over the years. They're one of the most professional teams I think I've ever witnessed in the sport. They're just, their approach to being the best athletes they can be, their professionalism with brands and just how they present themselves to the world and how much they share with their fans. They're just absolutely crushing it. But it hasn't all been smooth sailing from number one in the world rankings and winning world championship titles and all the glory that goes with it to injuries and having to rebuild but it's all part of the roller coaster journey of being a professional in sport but they've embraced it with class and it's just an absolute honor and privilege for me to just have them on the show as a couple so welcome and thank you for joining me on the greg bennett show lucy and reese charles barkley how are you guys thanks greg yeah um we're both pretty well actually yeah we're better than we have been over the last few months so yeah I speak for myself. I'm yeah, I well. think. Oh, yeah. Thanks for having us on the show. I definitely think we're just taking it day by day at the moment, and every day is a bit better than the day before. So, um, yeah, we're just going to keep building from here and. And hopefully it will go smoother than it has been. Oh, I bet, guys. And now uh, you mentioned just pre-show you you've gone back out to Lanzarote. You have a training camp there for the next few weeks. Yeah, I've been here for uh, two, just over two weeks, and Lucy joined me yesterday probably would say I'm on a training camp and Lucy's on a uh, rehabilitation mm -hmm. injury mm -hmm. camp. So, and, yeah. and catch up with Reese's suntan, which <laughs> was the main reason I needed to get here. <laughs> yes, the vanity side of things kicks in after a while. It's like, get me in the sun. <laughs> I get, I was a bit like that. I'm, 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 you know, Monday to Friday is kind of working, 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 and I'm never outside. And, and, and Laura and the kids are all so brown and tan. So today at the surf, I was just like, I don't want to go home. I'm just going to stay here and get, I'm, I don't care if I get fried. I got, I got to get some <laughs> sun. <laughs> I know, but Lucy, you were last on in November and that was just such an epic episode and, and, and we just dropped your name so much throughout it that we were like, I decided I got to have you guys, you know, on together and here we are six months later together. So I, I really appreciate you guys joining me. I feel like there's a lot to dissect both what's happened recently, but also I, I really wanted to just sort of rewind the clock on both of you and get to know how you guys are operating as a team and as a married couple and all of those kinds of things. So I really appreciate it. But first I want to congratulate you guys on signing with ASICS. Obviously having won the 70.3 Worlds wearing ASICS last year and actually nearly all of my racing last year was in ASICS. So I kind of had got really happy in the shoe. And I think that was one of the biggest things for me as an athlete was I didn't want to sign with a shoe brand unless I was like a thousand percent confident in the shoe. Mm. And after a year of running in the shoe, I was like, you know what, I'm pretty happy with this. So 
at the end of the year, there was a couple of um, shoe brands that reached out to us about uh, potentially partnering and, and having a sponsorship. So I kind of, I did try a few shoes over the winter, but it was always the Asics that I went back to and were my favorite. So they were the obvious choice to sign with. And obviously I was super excited to sign with them. And then obviously everything that happened with the injury, it was a real shame because obviously I wanted to go on and do some great racing this year in their shoe, but they have been so supportive. Like I just cannot even Mm. believe the support that they've given me so far. So it's really amazing to have signed with a a big brand like Asics when you're at the bottom and at the lowest point on an injury and, and they have faith in you and confidence that you'll be back to the top. So yeah, it's it's an it's a good positive to kind yeah. of have them on board and and a good motivator to obviously get back to where I was. Yeah, it, it's it's often hard when you when you get these injuries and you're like, oh, is that it? Is it over? You know, you have all these sort of kind of thought processes in your in your mind, and it is part of that roller coaster journey. You know, it's like the downs and the highs, and and I'm truly sorry you've been you know struggling with this injury, which I believe it's a stress fracture in the femoral head, neck, right? <laughs> Is that what yeah, it is? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that couldn't have been easy going from really the highest high. I mean, your performances last year and, and that 70.3 World Championship win um, where you had the fastest swim, bike and run. And on the episode we did together, I was like completely in awe of that performance. To, to having this injury to start the new year, you know, how was that initial feeling? Tell me about the first moment that you sort of recognized you had an injury. So I'm always, obviously, I think any top athlete is so in tune with their body. So you kind of recognize any little niggle that might be going on and kind of just keep an eye on it. And I think it was after having the niggle in my hip for probably a week or so that I thought, hmm, I think this might be a problem. Like if it's not going away um, within a week, then it's likely to be a problem. So I actually believe that was probably the lowest point because I was just like, Mm. one, we don't know what we're dealing with. It feels pretty bad. And I've got a huge year of racing. I just, this can't be happening. And then actually when, when we went and got the MRI and got the diagnosis, it yes, was worse than I thought. I thought it might be just a hip flexor strain or something like that, because in reality, the pain wasn't really that bad. It was something that was constantly there, but Mm. I was like, well, I could, tolerate it I could still swim back and run with it. it it wasn't really that bad but actually then the MRI confirmed yeah this is pretty bad um and then I guess that was probably the new lowest point because it was like yeah this isn't an injury that's going to fix overnight this is going to require a lot of time a lot of patience and then a real steady rebuild uh, to make sure it doesn't come back so yeah there's been some hard times for sure I, I bet and, and, and you said on any question I think you said you were diagnosed in mid-March so you said you were only suffering a couple of weeks before, like it wasn't ongoing months or months, it was just a, a week or two before and that was it? It was just kind of that quick? Yeah, it really was like so sudden, like it was just, oh, there's a pain there. Wow. Um, okay, well, we'll we'll act on it pretty quickly. So you, um, I actually contacted Red Bull first of all. They have an amazing kind of medical team. So they were like, well, we'll fly you home, we'll get you MRI'd and, and we'll see what's going on. And, and they obviously did that as quickly as they could. And I think that's why, even though we acted super fast, it was already too late. So that was, I guess, the unluckiest thing with this injury was that, and I guess, to be honest, with most bone injuries, as soon as you're feeling something, it's often too late. Like there's no real warning sign. I think sometimes when it's a muscular injury, you might have a bit more of a warning and you can maybe stop it from happening. But bone injuries, I think, tend to just be wham, we're here and it's going to be a problem that you've got to deal with. Oh, wow. And, and Reese, when what was that first conversation like between the two of you when you heard or did you see something beforehand or was there kind of that initial like, uh-oh? It was probably shock, to be honest. Um, mm. I was just trying to keep optimistic and I kept telling Lucy it will probably be fine, just just get it looked at so we know what we're dealing with. And, yeah, I, was, I remember it quite clearly. I was on the bike uh, on the turbo trainer and Lucy rang me sort of half expected her to say, I've got a, a strain and it, I need to take a week or two off. But she was like, I've got a, I've got a stress reaction in my hip and they need to do some further tests. But yeah, they're sending me home on crutches. And I was like, okay, hmm. this is, this is a disaster. Um, and obviously at that point we were very much like weeks away from traveling to go to the U S and, and do, um, 
our sort of build up to Utah and all sorts of things like that. So in my mind, I was just thinking I need to, uh, I need to cancel the flights, I need to cancel the accommodation. Mm-hmm. I need to let people know that mm-hmm. we're obviously not going to be able to race. I need to let the sponsors know. I was worried about ASICs because obviously at that point was, we, we basically the agreement had been, had been made and they wanted to very much launch Lucy's sponsorship start around the world championships. I was worried that they were going to say, okay, well, that sponsorship deal was on hold. So yeah, it was a, it was a real turmoil of just a lot going on in our minds, basically, and a lot to deal with. Yeah, there's almost yeah, there's a lot to do beyond just getting healthy, right? There's this communication that needs to go out to the world, and who who gets communicated to first, and then how do you do it? And and I think you're fortunate that you've got really great brands behind you guys. I think every major brand in the in the business kind of understands that this is part of the the course you know that we're in for the long haul that we don't look at two to three months six months windows it's kind of look look at years here i mean you guys are still so young in the world of endurance sports you're so young so i think you've got plenty of time how is it looking at the moment i mean you said on any question you you, you said look uh, the diagnosis the recovery can be anywhere sort of from four weeks to four months recovery so what's that looking like at the moment and, and what are you doing for recovery yeah so i've been like i said earlier really really fortunate to have a great team around me that have got the top experts in the hip issues and red bull have a fantastic medical team so i've been working with them as well kind of doing regular mris regular testing just kind of trying to do everything we can so that once it's mending i'm already kind of putting some strength in place so i don't get kind of subsequent injuries from having such a long break from obviously swim bike and run so I'm just at the point now where I can actually get back in the pool and swim so that's obviously a massive progress from doing absolutely nothing to being back in the water so pretty happy to be doing that Mm. and kind of just we are going to take this as steady as we can and make sure that it's kind of once this injury is gone that's it I guess that's the one big positive of a bone injury that typically once it's mended, it's actually stronger than it was before. So you're far less likely to get an injury there. Sometimes when you kind of have muscular tears or tendon tears, it actually can be worse because it can be kind of permanently a problem. But that was the one positive I took from it being a bone injury is that the recovery time is much longer, but once it's gone, it's gone. So that's kind of the big positive that I'm taking. And yeah, kind of like I said, we're just taking it day by day. I, I think I said on, on one of our YouTube videos that one of the big issues I had was actually quite soon after having that MRI where I had diagnosis, I actually then didn't have pain anymore. So the specialists always sort of say, use pain as your guide, but I wasn't getting pain doing anything. <laughs> so I couldn't judge if I was making it worse. So that was quite difficult. So mm. I haven't had pain for a long time now. Um, and we're hoping that that does mean it's mending. I've got I've got to wait another three weeks until I have my next MRI. Okay. Um, and then hopefully after that one, if that's good, then getting back on the bike may be possible. And, and so what do you guys think has caused it? Is, is it a biomechanical thing? Was it overuse? Was it, you know, nutrition? Do you guys have an idea or anything that stands out to you? Yeah, so recently I did some biomechanics testing with Red Bull. Um, obviously I can't, run right now but we did it on walking Uh and then we analyzed old running footage from last year um and they are almost 100 percent confident that this came from a biomechanics issue Mm -hmm. i do three really minor things just on my left leg when i run um and they pretty much said that it wouldn't have mattered what i'd done at some point in my career this would have happened um i have actually had hip issues before on that side Mm -hmm. but obviously never to the kind of severity of this injury so that kind of answers why that was happening before we never really dived into it too much it was like oh it's gone whatever injury i had oh it's gone it's fine so i think this time we're going with a real no stone unturned approach Mm -hmm. um so that once it's gone, it's gone. Um, and now I'm kind of able to start doing some what feels very basic gym work, but it's all stuff to correct this biomechanical uh, issue so that hopefully it won't happen again. So, 
this is what I said at the top of the show. You guys are the, the consummate professionals. I, I know you've got a great team around you. Give, give us an insight into that kind of recovery work, what it's been like over this last couple of months, you know, it, the soft tissue work that you've been getting, um, even nutrition and supplements and anything like that, and, or, or the kind of training like you just touched on before. Give us a little bit of an insight on what the days have been like, the, the day-to-day I mean, the the first like four or five weeks after the MRI diagnosis, I pretty much did nothing at all. That was the best advice. And actually quite a lot of other professional triathletes reached out to me have had sing, uh, similar injuries. And they were like, honestly, if you can suck it up and do nothing, that is the best thing you can do to get this thing mending. Um, so I kind of, you can have the top specialist in a, in a surgery tell you that that's what you need to do. But actually when it comes from other athletes that have been in that situation I feel like you're more likely to listen so I was like okay I'm gonna just try and mend as much as possible not do anything try and just relax kind of take my mind away from triathlon and that was probably the hardest period of the injury was like going actually I need to all this fitness I've built up I've got to let that go I've got to mend um and then yeah I guess like the the gym stuff that I'm introducing now is really looking at building up lower leg and ankle strength and stability um, as well as looking at glute and hip stability as well so we're we're doing work in a way that's not loading the hip so we're still limited in what we can do without affecting the hip negatively but we are just trying to build up every single thing around it so it has this kind of real support network of muscles and strength when I actually get back to moving more in a way that kind of resembles running I guess your patience must be abs you must be like kicking yourself just killing to get out there and work or or are you over that because I know I know an athlete mindset and a champion's mindset how much how how tough has this been on both of you? Because I feel for you, Reese, right now. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> kind of. This must be. It must have been pretty tough, yeah. Just to get the news. Firstly, you know, is always quite a grieving process. But then also now to have that absolute patience and discipline to not do the thing, the the things that you love to do, which is to push in sport. How much has that tested your patience? I've never been great at being patient as an athlete. Like you always want, you want it tomorrow. Like you want to be doing whatever your goal is achieving it tomorrow but I've had to be patient and I think once I kind of let go of the big goals that I had and just said you know what my only goal now is on mending uh forget everything else that we had planned um once I kind of done that and was at peace with that I think that helped a lot um it's not saying I still don't want to be running and cycling tomorrow of course I do like I want to be smashing sessions but I think at least now I've got to a point where I can swim, I can start to feel a bit more like an athlete again. I think when you're injured, it's easy to almost feel like you've lost your identity as an athlete. And certainly when I was just sat on that sofa, I just felt like a slob at home and felt guilty for doing it. So I kind of had to overcome that as well. And I know I've learned a hell of a lot from this injury, not just obviously about kind of um, everything that could have caused the injury in itself, but also just being patient being more like mentally resilient with things and I know that all those things will help me once I am actually back racing again Mm, it can really help with perspective you know and you you kind of have to change your outlook on life as a whole and and Reese, you know what what, what, you mentioned you know reaching out to the sponsors and stuff What, what was that reaction and how how was that sharing the news to the world really I mean you guys came out and said hey we're injured. Um, this isn't happening for this year. But what was that reaction, both you know, from sponsors, from from your peers, as you mentioned, and, and the fans? Um, yeah. Well, first of all, I guess we have to say a huge thank you to our manager Evan. Um, he basically took that responsibility and let let all of our sponsors know in a in a professional manner that unfortunately this had happened. Um, shared the diagnosis from the consultant with them. Let them know the prognosis and gave them the unfortunate news that um, Lucy's not going to be racing in the world championships and also the sub eight project, which is a huge part mm. of the year. Mm. Um, and Lucy's been, you know, involved in that from day one, pushing it as hard as she can. And unfortunately that was also going to be canceled. A lot of our sponsors had done a lot of work behind the scenes, um, trying to get unique equipment, um, rushing through some sort of designs that 
probably wouldn't have been put through had we not had the sub eight uh, sub eight project so yeah it was a huge it felt like we was letting everyone down mm. but actually the support and um they were all just just completely well, it was a bit speechless really of how how nice they were about it all they wanted was what was best for lucy um in your mind you kind of think oh no they're all gonna you know if worst case scenario you catastrophe everything and think that they're all going to drop you but obviously in reality like you say they're 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 not short-sighted they know long term lucy will come back from this stronger and uh yeah they they obviously disappointed that we couldn't be at the races that we wanted but ultimately they they were all amazingly supportive mm. and have been nothing but supportive throughout and, and you mentioned you've had a bit of feedback from other athletes you know lucy that have had been through similar things. Was there a bit of a an outreach from a whole bunch of them, or any anybody in specifically you want to kind of mention that had, you know was supportive? I mean, yeah, every, every single athlete that I've spoke to has been so supportive. But I mean, there are a few people that kind of went a bit above and beyond, and I would definitely say um, Lindsay Corbin was one of those. She, mm. I think, she's got a lot of experience in a similar injury as well. So she just gave me a ton of advice. She's actually ripped wrote uh, an amazing blog uh, yeah a blog on the experience so uh, she suggested I read that and I kind of I took a lot from that as well and um, also Jess Learmoff reached out and she's been really supportive throughout but I mean there's been honestly like loads and loads of athletes that have been amazing uh, just giving their advice and their experience and saying they, they tried this and this really helped heal the injury and yeah, it's been amazing. I think we have such an, a, such a great community, a supportive community in triathlon. So, um, yeah, I, anyone that's given me advice, I'm so <laughs> thankful. So thanks if you've reached out to me. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. And and as you guys know, I, I had Jan Fredino on the show a couple of weeks ago and I, I got the true sense of where he was uh, and he even said it, that, you know, he was to the point of acceptance you know we call the we call these injuries you know it is like going through a grieving phase you know you have something really taken away from you and it, it is quite dramatic how, how would you say your mental sort of state is now and, and and have you felt like you've gone through those sort of stages of um the grieving you know the denial and anger and i think it's bargaining and there's a depression stage in there as well. And then yeah. acceptance, that's it. So they're the five. So where, where are you on that table? Are you, are you kind of almost to acceptance or are we waiting for that next MRI? What, what is it? Where are you at the moment? I think I was at acceptance quite a while ago, to be honest. Like mm. once I did let go of those goals and just know, well, they're not happening. Um, all we need to work on now is mending me. I think I was, I was really at that point of, yep, yeah, I'm injured. That's fine. And everything has to be pragmatic now. There's no point being emotional about it and crying and being angry. And obviously I had that period in the beginning, which probably only lasted really for a couple of weeks. And once we had the diagnosis and knew what we were dealing with, I think that makes it easier. Also, I guess the next point that made it easier was actually telling the world because you feel like you have a huge weight on your shoulders when you've got this injury and no one knows about it. You don't know what the sponsors are going to be like. Then you've got the reaction of the triathlon community and everyone has their opinion of why it happened and I think once we found out exactly why it happened and realized that it's it's happened because of a biomechanics issue that can I say easily be fixed it's going to require a lot of work but actually once I've done it I will be a better athlete for it and I'll be far less likely to get injured so once you kind of get to the point where you can take positives from it and start to see progress day by day I think you're you're definitely at a good place. You're you've accepted what's happened, and you're kind of on the other side of it, and making sure that each day you get a little bit better. And that that might not always be in fitness. I think that's the thing. Like my fitness is not getting better day by day, but I'm getting stronger day by day and, and making progress in different ways. That's so well said, and I'm really happy for you because I I get it. I've been an athlete myself. I've had plenty of these times where you just. It's, it's just awful. And there's a tremendous amount of pressure um, that we put on ourselves and especially you coming off being world number one and <laughs> all of that and just, okay, what things can I work on? And, and if it's the mental strength and the perspective and all sorts of things that you've got to learn from this, I'm, I have no doubt you'll come out stronger. But what, why don't we shift gear a little bit because I don't want to always just be talking about your injury, but it's really wonderful to hear that you guys are getting on top of it. I have zero doubt, as I'm sure everybody listening does, that you're going to come back 
you know, stronger than ever. And I can't wait to see that happen. Um, but did you guys actually get a chance to just shifting gear a bit? Did you get a chance to sort of watch St. George? Did you watch it? Um, and what were your thoughts about the St. George Ironman World Championships? Yeah, I actually, I, I biked the whole the whole way through the race. I watched the whole thing on the turbo train. <laughs> finally did the um, Prudential Ride London course on Zwift that I've been putting off for ages. <laughs> it's about six hours of going up and down the Surrey Hills. Wow. Um, but yeah, I watched I watched the whole race. And um, yeah, it's interesting you say, um, at what point was you at peace with everything? I think I wouldn't have been able to watch that race if I wasn't at peace with the situation. Like obviously mm. it was very difficult to know that Lucy wasn't there. And you, you kind of question, you think if Lucy was there in the shape that she was in last year, what would have happened? Mm. Um, and I'm sure it would have been, you know, a brilliant, a brilliant race, whatever. Oh, it would have been a fantastic race. Oh, we yeah. Were... <laughs> I feel like, and on the men's side as well, like yeah, obviously yeah. it's such a shame. So many big names yeah, wasn't, uh, wasn't able to make it to the start line oh. for whatever reason. You can't help, but you can't help but wonder what would happen if if uh, if Jan was there or Patrick was there or Alistair. Oh, Javier Gomez with his new coach. I was so excited yeah. about that one. I know. Oh, man. From a race perspective, I thought it was absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Um, I loved watching it. it, it it's, a, it's an amazing course. All of the athletes obviously turned up fit and rare and ready to go. And you can see that from from the points from after the race, the PTO points, whether you agree with them or not, they're all super high. So everyone everyone sort of bought their A game to that race. So yeah, it was a real shame not to be there, but it was great to watch. Yeah. And uh, no matter what, we're still both huge fans of the sport. If we're there or we're not there, we still, we still like enjoy watching the races. I know I'm the biggest groupie out there, mate. I love having you guys on. <laughs> I watch all of them. Lucy, did you watch it or you went obviously on nine hours on a bike or however long race was? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I watched it on and off. I didn't, yeah. I didn't, meant myself by watching the whole day I kind of watched yeah. bits of it um amongst obviously trying to do some of the work that I can do on rehab um and feel like I'm making progress towards being back there but I think a bit like what Ree said like we came into this sport as amateurs and we're just massive fans of the mm. of the pros and the racing so we've never really lost that it's always like we're just fans of the sport and seeing what athletes can achieve so um, it was great to watch and I was really, really pleased to see Daniela looking like she's back near her best. And I've always said that if I can be on a world championship start line with Daniela, I want to race her at her best. So I hope she sticks around and gives me the opportunity to race her at her best. Um, but yeah, it was it was a great race to see. And obviously to see Christian race how he did was just oh. phenomenal. And it, now I'm really excited to watch the um sub seven sub eight yeah. and obviously hopefully Alistair will be healthy for that and, and give Christian a good run for his money so yeah it was pretty cool to see see everyone bring in their a game so early in the season I think that we've never seen that before so yeah real change the European women I don't know what it is but it just crushed it once again I just thought it would be Kat Matthews and um, Annie Hug on the podium there with Daniela who's back and then on the men's side with Christian went taking the win. It, it was really an incredible performance. Um, when is that sub seven, eight? Um, are you having- it is the the very beginning of June. So there's not an exact oh. day yet because um, obviously they will pick the day with the best weather and conditions. So I think they're looking between the 3rd and the 5th of June. So somewhere around that time. Okay. Um, yeah, weather dependent. Okay, so they've, it'll be Nicholas Spirig and who have they put in in your place? It's Kat. So Kat Matthews yeah, it is has Kat Matthews. come in. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, so she will come in to replace me and then obviously, yeah, Christian and Alistair on the men's side. Okay, very cool. Will you go out and watch it or have anything to do with it or is it just like, no, just get healthy at this point? Yeah, I think like I, I would love to be there, but the focus for me at the moment is definitely on yeah. just getting healthy and putting all my energy into that and definitely going and watching a seven eight hour event is pretty exhausting so i will be similar to the world champs like i will i will tune in and out and, and see how it goes yeah. but um we'll focus on just getting better now no, that'll be fantastic well let's i want to rewind the clock a little bit here on you guys and we did this with you already lucy but i kind of reese i haven't done this with you and i'd love to just have a better understanding of how you got to where you are now and you know take me through even prior to you guys meeting, but then how did you guys meet? I'm fascinated by who made the first move. Um, 
<laughs> so just tell me, give me a, give me a little bit of a, a rewind the clock, you guys. Well, Reese, you, you in particular, but then Lucy, I'll follow up with you in a sec. A little bit about my background. Um, I played, oh, I did karate for six or seven years. Oh, nice. Um, and then I did squash just for fun. And then I finally took up swimming when I was about 14. So I was quite late to swimming. And then I went to university with the swim, uh, was like joined the swimming squad. And that's where I met Lucy. Uh, she was by far and away a better swimmer than I could ever dream of being. Um, she was basically on the GB squad and at the time training for the 2012 Olympics. Mm. And I was basically just a, an average level swimmer swimming for the university really. So I don't really know how I managed to. Yeah, to don't get jump over this bit. We're going to lean in here a little bit more. I want to know. <laughs> yeah. I have no idea what I did, but I did was something it, good. Was so, it? I yeah. was pathetic. Okay, I'm going to go bring it back to me, and I'm sorry about that. We're going to quickly bring it back to me. I remember, <laughs> I remember being in Canada, in Victoria, Canada, and I was like, you know what? I'm not going to date girls anymore. I'm going to focus on my career. I was, you know, 28 or whatever, and. Uh, and then all of a sudden this girl turned up in pool deck <laughs> and, you know, down the other end, 50 metres down the other end of the pool. I was like, who's that? And that was it. Basically, I went and had coffee with her right after and we never left each other's side. So we, we were very, very simple. And I, I'm not going to lie, it was a little bit, you know, um, what do I even say? It was about what I saw. <laughs> it wasn't, so yeah. what, what was it like for you, mate, when you first saw Lucy? Well, I think, like, the, the thing that drew me to her was obviously um, – her looks and everything but the main thing I was attracted to was just I her work ethic was insane yeah. like she would swim and out compete the, some of the top men swimmers in the country she would just keep going until basically everyone else tapped out on the poolside and said I can't handle no more we used to do a swim set where it was basically 100s reducing your rest each time so in the end we were getting down to like 100s off of 105 and there was one guy who went on to swim in the commonwealth games and lucy in the lane left that was it lucy was basically just repping 105 105 105 and in the end the guy was just like i can't do no more like this this woman is insane <laughs> and that was it and i remember that session so vividly because i was just like this 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 lady is a, is a machine she's incredible but in mean, both inside and outside of the pool as well, like her, her work ethic was amazing. So, yeah, I think it just really, it, drew, it inspired me really. I, at the time as well, I was at university and it was quite difficult to maintain swimming because um, you swim, you know, yeah. twice a day, early in the morning and in the evening and go to lectures all day. I was really struggling to balance the two. Mm. And I think I just drew inspiration from how hard Lucy would work in, in each and every session. So yeah, that's that. pretty much how we, how we met. I'm, I'm nodding my head over here. I think us guys that have married these very strong women, I think we, we are, can I say turned on about that, <laughs> you know, that kind of work <laughs> ethic and that kind of just strength of character. It is such a turn on in a way that I'm like, I'm nodding my head over here going, yep, that's exactly how Laura was. And that's exactly one of my things that I was like, I just really love that. That's really cool. What about you, Lucy? Was there a moment there where you, you, you saw Reese and was like, huh, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think I remember because possibly Reese had, rejoined the squad I'm not sure I just remember him walking on to poolside and I was like who's that and someone <laughs> did say oh he used to swim at the club here and I was like oh right okay and then I can't really remember when we first got talking I think we might have even gone on a night out when Reese was at uni like it was like freshers week or something um and yeah we just got to know each other and feel like it just really clicked from the beginning and then from that point onwards, Reese was just so supportive of what I was doing and always was like, oh, have you maybe thought about trying this with your training or, or trying this? And I was like, no, or maybe I'll try that. And everything I tried, it seemed to work. And I would progress and be like, that this is really cool that we can not only obviously have a great friendship and a great partnership, but also have a really good almost coaching relationship, which I think is how like when we came into triathlon, Reese was always mm. the coach to me. Like I would always take his advice and you would research and look into things and say, oh, there's this method of training we could try and, and it might work and we would give it a go. And I think we just was on a, a really cool journey together from swimming and then venturing into triathlon. And we've always had a lot of fun, I think. And we both don't take ourselves too seriously. And I think that's that also is what works as well. 
I think that's great. But I also, you both skipped over what I really wanted. The, you know, like you went straight to, yeah, we had this lovely relationship. We liked each other and, and we, he was helping me with coaching. But who made the first move then? Because to go from <laughs> friendship and coaching to being a couple and being married, somebody had to go, okay, I'm going to risk everything here and put it out there. Because it's kind of, I went through this with Laura and I know a lot of people listening have done this. When you really like somebody and you really like want this to be the one, it's not that easy to make the first move. So who did it? I don't, I don't actually know if either of us did, but I knew it was a relationship when Lucy's toothbrush was in my toilet. So <laughs> not in, <laughs> in, like, literally in the toilet, <laughs> in the bathroom. <laughs> no, but she'd all but moved in at one point. I was living in a flat at uni and all of a sudden her clothes were appearing in my cupboard and I was like, okay, so this is a relationship now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not, not, a, not a toothbrush in the toilet. No, that wouldn't be good. Because I, I am yeah. fascinated. Neither of us went, hey, will you go out with me? Like, no, we're not, it was just, we're, it we're just happened quite. organically. Yeah, yeah. We're, not, we're, not, we're both not very good at um, public display of affection, I think. We're both quite uh, cringe at the thought of that kind of thing. So. Do you really? Yeah, and I also, I, I think maybe not from any fault of our own, but it's like when we were swimming, our swimming coach was very against our relationship. So we always never really showed any affection to each other at swimming. So like we'd have, I remember another guy in the squad was like, how are you two even dating? You don't even speak to each other. And it was like, well, no, we're doing that on purpose here because the coach really didn't like our relationship. So then obviously behind closed doors, we would show affection, but yeah. we just kept it very professional, I guess, um, okay. when we were training. Yeah. So. That, that's all. I'm curious as to what the, the coach just didn't, like any relationships you mean or was you two specifically um i think it well he, he basically saw it as a distraction to the training mm. that he was giving and mm. i don't know i think he went out of his way to try and show relationships won't be tolerated in his squad so he made a little bit of an example of us um because there was other you know there was other people in the club that obviously were attracted to each other or been going out with each other at some point or something like that. So yeah, he didn't, he didn't particularly like people in his swimming squad having a relationship with each other. So yeah, it was a little bit awkward and difficult at the time, but yeah, uh, yeah, it didn't, it didn't stop us. How have you guys <laughs> been able to manage? I mean, you, you say you guys enjoy a good time. And I remember Lucy, you said that on your episode with me uh, six months ago. It's like, is there a communication process in, like right now we're pushing as athletes, we're, we're having kind of this coach-athlete relationship and then going, hey, now we're home, we're a married couple, we can be intimate, we can do all these kinds of things and be normal people. Do you have to monitor that or are you guys just winging it? <laughs> but, well, yeah, I'd perfect. say we're winging it, but it's working. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I think I think Laura and I are much the same. We do try to say we communicate a bit about it, but it, it is that kind of you're constantly on. And I don't know, Reese, if you, I, I, I don't. You guys know Mark and Helen Jenkins. I don't know if you know those guys, but um, you know Helen's multiple world champion, and they're both Olympians and everything else. The Welsh couple and Mark and I, we could talk about triathlon all day, every day. Right? It's like this. Laura and Helen would just be shaking their heads at us. Are you guys like that? Is one of you talking more about the sport than the other and, and more into it than the other? Um, be, we are both big fans of the sport. We both don't really talk about triathlon once we've seen results. We always we, we maybe sort of debrief on it a little bit and say, oh, that was amazing yeah. to see this. And But yeah, I think one of the things that I talk about more than Lucy is the science kind of research training methods. Um, I can go off on a little bit of a waffle on I don't know, the latest journal that I've read or something like that. Yeah, well, you have your sports science degree and, and that background. So you guys started the sport in a kind of a dramatic fashion in Ironman UK in 2014. And your rise to the top has been actually really quite astonishing. Lucy, you know, three seconds at Kona, your 70.3 world championship win that you had. It really has been amazing. And I'm, has the success surprised you both? And how much of that success has, has impacted your life? It's changed our life completely. Like we, we literally did not come into triathlon to become professional athletes in it in any way, shape or form. We, we quit swimming, which was our professional sport. And we wanted fun. We wanted excitement, enjoyment, but nothing serious. We both set up, you know, Lucy went and worked in a zoo. So she was full-time employment working for a marketing agency in the mm. zoo. I, I was finishing off my studies and with the ambition of working as a personal trainer 
And we both thought doing an Ironman would give us, make, make us distinguish us a little bit from other personal trainers in the field and say that we've been and done an Ironman. We both come from a professional swimming background. We would reach more clients. And um, yeah, here we are seven or eight years on and yeah, Lucy's a world champion and I'm, I'm still just an average age grouper trying to be pro, but <laughs> that's not <laughs> fair, mate. That's not fair. I do not take Lucy's world titles and not add you to that equation. So it's uh, I, and I know you know <laughs> that, but it, it takes a team. It really does. Yeah. We've, we've got an amazing team around us and we've actually built our team more and more over the last few years. We've sort of had to realize pretty quick that, we both couldn't do it all. Mm. And when you get to the level that Lucy's at, you, you very quickly need people to take some of that responsibility off you because otherwise you just end up, you know, responding to emails all day. Mm-hmm. You can't keep on top of your own diary. You, you don't even have enough time to communicate with your with your sponsors. Um, so, yeah, we've brought on a manager, Evan, who does a really good job of that. Lucy's sister, Holly, who now takes care of most of Lucy's media We've got Paz helping us, working for us, who who deals with all of our emails and logistics. So, yeah, the, and of course, Dan now is coaching. So the team has grown and grown and gone from strength to strength over the last, particularly the last two or three years. Mm. Um, we've really spent a lot of time and effort trying to find the right people to do the right right uh, jobs. How, how has that been for you, Reese? Yeah, especially bringing on Dan Lorang, at the, you know, about this time last year your role kind of more the coach and stepping back a little bit I know you're kind of still involved on the day-to-day but has that been how's that felt um I think it was actually me who said to Lucy I think now is the time for you to look at getting someone else other than me doing it Mm. we'd we'd got huge success doing me coaching Lucy uh, but Lucy at the time was thinking about doing short course racing and Mm -hmm. that's something I have no experience in um, it's a little bit different in Ironman because I've done it as well so mm. I have experience and I understand it from a even from a personal perspective but I've studied it for the last eight years really now I've really spent a lot of my time and effort even after I finished my degree educating myself in in the ultra endurance side of things but short course stuff I had no experience in and it was actually Dan who reached out to us around about the same time I was thinking if ever I would get someone to coach Lucy, I'd want someone like Dan to do it because mm. it's a huge, you know, taking over what was already very successful was a risk. And it wasn't a case of taking Dan on and just saying, here, here's Lucy, off you go. It's been a, a real gradual transition of um, me working with Dan. Initially, it was more kind of me communicating, saying this is the kind of stuff we do. And then gradually Dan phased it into his his methods of training and it, it definitely has worked, but um, we still we still have to keep a, an open dialogue. I'm I'm the one here every day. I can yeah. see Lucy's training. I can sometimes see when things won't work, and the communication's been excellent all throughout. Even with the injury, um, Dan's been very supportive of everything. So it's working well at the moment, and we're very much enjoying having uh, someone else set the training and um, taking that responsibility of we just basically just have to do what's set on the program and com- communicate any issues if there are any rather than having to always think about what should we be doing this and and sometimes you can be your own worst enemy when you set yourself a program because mm-hmm. you you either overcook it or you undercook it and I think Dan gets it just right really with, with, with the training that he's been setting us. Well you got to have that trust in your coach too don't you it's kind of like you got to be all in for it to really work are you doing all the all the training with Lucy? Are you guys all together or do you get to go do some of your own stuff every now and then? <laughs> well, over the last few months, obviously, I've felt really guilty because <laughs> I've, I've been doing yeah. everything by myself. Yeah. Lucy's been at home with Lola. But um, norm- normally we we train at the same time. We don't necessarily train together apart from in the pool. We, we train together in the pool, but pretty much all of my run sessions – for a, for a long time now, I've not done with Lucy. I might do the odd easy run or she'll do a long run while I'm doing a long run, but we won't necessarily run together. Biking, again, the same thing. We'll, we'll be on the turbo trainer together at the same time, but the sessions will be different. And if we're out on the road, the odd time, if we if we go out and do a long ride, Lucy might tag along and ride with me, but n- not necessarily always having to keep up or or vice versa. Sometimes I'm last year was a good example. I wasn't very fit at all last year. I took a real step back and tried to focus on mm-hmm. 
keeping that transition smooth between me coaching Lucy and Dan taking over, but also I knew that it was post pandemic year. We needed a big year and Lucy was in incredibly good shape early on, even from when she'd done the Olympic trials mm -hmm. with the swimming. I was like, wow, this could be the year. And at, the, at that point early in the year, Kona was on. So I was like, right, I'm just going to give everything I can to be Lucy's assistant in getting her to Kona start line in the best shape she can possibly be. Um, so yeah, last year she was running rings around me. I couldn't keep up with her at all on anything. But <laughs> unfortunately, Kona didn't happen, but the seventy point three worlds did, and I think the proof is in the result. She was in she was in the best shape ever because she had a great team around her. And also, I do think it just helped. Like I knew that she needed that drink at that moment in that session, or you know, the fan wasn't turned off, uh, turned up enough, or you know, she looked a little bit uncomfortable, and all these little things that wow. you, yeah, your coach can't do that from. Dan, Dan sets the program, but he can't be there hands on all yeah. the time to yeah. do those kind of things, whereas I can. You're almost like a, an executive assistant. You know, that's the term that's yeah, used. Exactly. It's yeah, like somebody's got to carry out the actual day to day, get, you know, organize everything. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and because, you know, we've, we've got such a relationship that does, doesn't even, Lucy doesn't even need to really say what she needs. I know what she needs. I can see it. And I've been through that as well. Like, uh, it makes such a huge difference having having that kind of support role, um, and 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 she, Lucy does it for me as well. Like there's times where I'm in a heavy training block and she's nece not necessarily in that hasn't been for a while, but over the last few weeks actually, where I've been ramping up my training again, and Lucy hasn't been able to do t hmm. the training, she's been supportive and and, and returning the favour. So yeah, That's it does awesome. it does work both ways. I love that you guys have a beautiful relationship. I think it's absolutely fantastic and so supportive of each other and that's what really what it takes you know you need that team I've always been impressed with your whole team especially Holly I think she's she just the work she creates with your YouTube and your social medias and everything she's just absolutely fantastic I think the world of Holly and the work she's doing Just a quick mini break to remind you to go check out Any Question. It's a fabulous app with all the world's greatest experts in various channels answering your questions. You can look at all the answers that they've done previously, but go check it out. That's Any Question on your app, iOS or Android. Go check it out. What I'd love to do if we could is we'll just finish up with some rapid fire questions if you're in for it. And I'll alternate who gets to answer each one first. Um, but I'll have the other one follow it up. You ready? Okay. All right. <laughs> Lucy, best and worst subject at school? Oh, best was uh, PE or physical education. Worst was probably, I'm going to go with like science. Science. <laughs> okay, Reese. Uh, best was PE, phys physical education, and worst was RE, which was religious education. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. All right, Reese, what are you currently reading or watching on TV? Oh, I'm, uh, I'm reading a book called um, The Obstacle in the Way. Mm. And it's, uh, it's a really good book about dealing with obstacles, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, what life throws at you, so it's quite relevant. And I'm, and I'm watching Top Boy on Netflix. Top Boy. <laughs> awesome. Lucy. Um, I'm reading a book called This Is Gonna Hurt, uh, which was recommended by quite a few people, um, which has been really, really good. And I recently watched a documentary, it's very short, on Netflix called um, Hold Your Breath, The Ice Diver. Mm. And it's really inspiring. So, yeah, it'd be worth checking that out. Great. Thanks, guys. I'm taking notes here. Perfect. All right, Lucy, first car you owned. Oh, I had a Fiat. Reese used to call it the bubble. It was really small. <laughs> and Reese, uh, Toyota Yaris. It was my sister's. Is that the excuse? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my car was actually my mum's as well. I just borrowed it. <laughs> All right, Reese. The two most used apps on your phone. Oh, I. I'll probably say YouTube. And training peaks. Wow. They're two good ones. Lucy. Mine at the moment has been this really stupid game. Um, <laughs> Which one are you doing? Because I do a, a bit, stupid game every now and then. It's a bit like Candy Crush, but not quite. 
um, which called? has been occupying my time whilst I've been on the sofa. Uh, and then the other one. Now you've got to tell me the name of it. What, what is the name of it? Is it Toon Blast? No, I'm not. I'm not saying the name of is it. Because I got, I got hooked on Toon Blast oh, yeah. a few years ago and got to like, I can't tell you how many. And if you've, if you've seen Toon Blast, I'm embarrassing myself very oh, much right now. Not to say the name now. <laughs> You're not getting away with it's that. Cool. It's called Project Makeover and you basically, you play like Candy Crush and then you win money to then do like a makeover of this like character. <laughs> no, I'm really embarrassed. <laughs> oh, this is the best. Oh I love God. it. I love it. I thought I was bad at Toon Blast, but okay, great. Everybody, Project Makeover, go check it out. And what's the other? Yeah, that's one app. <laughs> Did you give me two? I can't even remember what you said now. No, no. I think that's been mo- most of my time has been on there. Uh, the oh. other one is like we have a, um, a Red Bull app with all the athletes on it and like all of our updates and events that are going on. Obviously, recently was the Wings for Life run. So all mm. of us athletes are really involved in that. So um, and we can actually order all of our Red Bull kit on there. So I've been doing a bit of retail therapy, ordering some new Red Bull kits. So, so you've been playing <laughs> games and doing re- retail therapy. Well, you have been on the couch for the last, you know, four to six weeks. So fair enough. Um, and it, <laughs> I think that's great. All right. Um, Lucy, what time of day are you most productive? Oh, if I get up for swimming in the morning, uh, after swimming, I'm like the most productive I'll ever be. So that's probably like 7.30 in the morning. Mm-hmm. And Reese? Oh, I always seem to be really productive just before bed and then never sleep. I mm. always remember all the stuff I haven't done in the day and start doing it. So probably, I don't know, just before going to bed at nine, ten o'clock in the evening, which is it's actually probably something I need to change, to be honest. I know, but it's, sometimes it's just who you are. Like I'm terrible. Yeah. I'm terrible in the evenings. It's like I, I look at my my Slack account, my emails and my WhatsApp and everything's binging. And I'm like, no, nah, I'll, I'll get to that at five in the morning, but I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it now. <laughs> no. Um, all right. Reese, first job. Oh, uh, I was a carpenter. Oh, really? Very cool. Yeah. Worked for my dad for three years as a, as a carpenter. So you're a sports scientist, carpenter. You got a whole sleuth of things, haven't you? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> right. And Lucy? Uh, my first job was when I worked at the zoo and did the marketing. Yeah, yeah, that's right. All right, Lucy, summer or winter? Summer. Breeze? I'm going to say winter. Really? I think yeah. You, I think you're the first person I've ever asked that to that said winter. Wow. <laughs> what is it about winter? Sorry, I'm going to have to lean into this because I don't get winter, so you're going to give me a bit more. Well, I, I really like cross-country season, even though I'm not very good at it. Mm. Um, but I enjoy running around in the mud. But the main thing is, I think we get to, typically we get to unwind, like Kona's finished, yeah, we can enjoy living yeah. in London. You know, we pay an extortionate rate to live in London. We never get to see it apart from in the winter. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I think I associate it with a little bit more of a relaxed time. Summer, yeah, I can get summer's, that. summer's fleeting for us. It comes and goes so quick normally because we're always traveling and racing. And before you know it, winter's upon us. So. Yeah, there's something comforting about winter, isn't there? Yeah, I get that nestled in. Um, all right, Reese, who would you want to play a movie of your life? Not an easy one, but throw it out there. Oh, but yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say someone like uh, Dwayne Johnson, but he doesn't look anything <laughs> like me. He's a perfect resemblance. <laughs> yeah, uh, probably someone like him, or I don't know. Yeah. I, I agree. I love. Oh, that actually, guy. I'm gonna have to say I'm gonna have to say. Um, oh, what's his name? Oh. Oh, Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds. Ryan yeah. Reynolds. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think he looks like Ryan Reynolds. So. I can't see the resemblance, but I think he's a really cool actor. Yeah. Yeah, he's hilarious. He's hilarious. Yeah. That's a good call. Both of those are huge. I, I think a combination of those two, and they've pretty much nailed you, mate. That's perfect. All right, Lucy. Well, now you've made me think of Ryan Reynolds. I'd like his wife to play me, but I can't remember her name. Oh, oh it's Blake Lively. Blake that Lively. Is, um, yeah, I saw Ryan that there. What? Oh, he was married to Scarlett Johansson before Blake Lively. Oh, yeah, I like her as well. Oh, okay, so either of them would work. All right. Either of them would do, or Jennifer Aniston would be cool. <laughs> I like your taste. Oh, actually, I can see the resemblance. Though. All right, a couple more, and then I'll let you guys go, because I know it's getting late. But, uh, Lucy, which decade of music is best? Oh, definitely, like, the 80s or 90s. Cool. Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. Reese, agree, agree, agree. Yeah, all agree. right, we can all have a dinner party together with decent music. Okay, <laughs> Reese, greatest movie movie of all time. 
Shawshank Redemption. Mm, cracker. Love it. I'm going to say The Pursuit of Happiness. Both really good. Oh, uh, yes, yes, yes. Um, Will Smith. Yeah. Yes, yes. Very good movie. I love it. Okay. Who does most of the chores around the house? Oh, me, every minute of every day. No, I beg to differ. <laughs> <laughs> trouble is, you only recognise what you do and I only recognise yeah, what I do. Yeah, that's so. the problem, yeah. <laughs> okay, you guys have a normal relationship. I love it. All right, guys, <laughs> what, what's next for you? Getting healthy, you know, what are your thoughts on 2022? I know I'm not putting, you know, I'm not holding you to it, obviously, but, you know, what second half of the year, kind of that's the hope, I guess? Yeah, I think... Um, we very much well Lucy's hopefully just going to try and get herself back to doing triathlon by the end of the year I think that would be nice yeah yeah, 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 yeah. we're not we've, we've we have asked we've asked this to so many consultants like can you give us a time frame do yeah. you know and no the one thing they've all said is we just can't give you a time frame and I don't think that you should even think about time frames with this kind of thing because like what lucy said beginning it could take four weeks it could take four months so yeah no, we just it, basically got to play, play it's almost like by. another covid year you know it's like no one knows yeah. no one knows when it's gonna <laughs> it's like okay we'll do the best we can during this time but you know yeah you get it but all they've said is it will fix but we can't tell you when it will fix yeah. so yeah but in the short term it. you're going to work on your tans spend some time in Lanzarote. Yeah. Is it Lanzarote or Lanzarote? How do you guys say it? Lanzarote. 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 Uh, and you're, you're, yeah. you're put up there. You go sponsor out there, don't you? you got somebody that looks after you there? Yeah, very, very fortunate to be sponsored by Club La Santa. Oh, um, nice. And that's where we're at the moment. They they put us up, they look after us. And we're it's a home away from home, and it literally is because we leave so much stuff here. That <laughs> we, we've got bikes here, we've got aircon unit here and everything. So we've, we've moved into the premises, basically, but... Very yeah, cool. we, we spend a good three or four months of every year here. So mm. yeah, we're very happy here. Well, guys, yes, Lucy, Reese, always appreciate getting this chance to chat with you both. Um, looking forward to seeing you on any question. I've, I've got plenty of questions there for you both. And it has been wonderful to see you, you, you both using any question and sharing what's going on in your lives. Um, but truly appreciate you coming on the show again so thank you thanks oh, very thank much thank you thanks for having us all right and listeners you can uh, check out all the show notes and timestamps and links and everything at bennettendurance.com forward slash media thanks a lot for listening if you enjoyed the show your support would truly be appreciated you can visit the patreon page or you can subscribe with your podcast app of choice don't miss the next episode so subscribe and be notified for show notes, if you want to know more, please visit bennettendurance.com. I'm Phil Liggett, and on behalf of Greg Bennett, here's to the next time, and I hope you will join Greg again very soon. <laughs>